This video is for activity 4A in my touch develop curriculum. Start by going into touch develop. You can actually just go to straight to touchdevelop.com now and then you can choose to log in from here. So we're going to run touch develop in the browser. I'm going to sign in with a Microsoft account. And then we're going to create a basic game for Activity 4A using the accelerometer. So we're going to start by creating a script. Notice the increasing number of templates that we've got to choose from. So what we're going to take is the physics game starter. And we're going to call this not very original, I know, but I can't think of anything better offhand. So we're going to create this game and we're going to turn the gravity off because we want to use the accelerometer to tilt it to make the ball move. So we're going to put the gravity to nothing. Um, I'm going to be adding a soccer ball later, so I'm going to make the background green. So we're going to set the board. Set background to green to look like grass. There you go, around that looks like grass. We're going to have some friction on. So we're going to set the default friction for the board, which means that every spike that you add will by default have this friction. We're going to put it up to about 0 0.03. If you put friction to 1, remember, it means things don't move at all. And lastly, we're going to create a boundary around the whole screen. Um, and that's by putting it at zero, puts a boundary around the outside of the game board. Uh, then we're going to add a ball. Okay, so let's go into art. And we'll search online and look for ball. Um, we'll choose that ball there, that's quite nice, isn't it? And we'll call that soccer ball up at the top where it says art resources. And you see it's renamed it now to soccer ball in the art. Uh, now we're going to go back into main and we're going to declare that. Okay, so remember the way you declare variables, var. So what I want is board, create picture, to create a picture sprite and we're going to change that to art and the soccer ball that we loaded in. So we're creating a sprite and it's based on the soccer ball. I'm going to rename that to ball and we're going to make that global because we need to access it from within the game loop. We're now going to go into the game loop, which remember repeats as the game runs. We're going to create a, ver a local variable here to store the data from the accelerometer. We're going to use senses and we're going to use a command called acceleration quick, which returns a vector 3. A vector 3 contains x, y and z components. The x and y is a number between minus, well, x, y and z is a number between minus 1 and 1, with 0 meaning no tilt at all. Um, on the x, uh, x component, for instance, minus 1 means you've tilted all the way to the left, where 1 means you've tilted all the way to the right, and 0 means you haven't tilted it left or right. On the y, it's basically tilting forward and back or up and down, whatever you, way you want to look at it. And again, it's between minus 1 and 1, with 0 meaning no tilt at all. Z is whether your tablet's basically upside down or not, so we're not interested in that. We're going to use acceleration quick, and we're going to scale it up. And scaling it up basically multiplies those values on the x, y, and the z. So instead of getting minus 1 to 1, we'll get a value between minus 60 and 60, for instance, which is a better value for adding to the ball to make it move, because minus 1 to 1 wouldn't move the ball too much. Um, there is also some other commands in there that I kind of skipped over there called acceleration smooth and acceleration quick sorry, acceleration stable, those give readings over longer periods of time, 
but they're not quite so instant. So for a game, we want to use acceleration quick, which gives us instant feedback. Next, we're going to go into global variables, go into ball, and we're going to set the ball speed. And the ball speed is going to be set based on what we do with the tilt. So what we're going to say is set ball speed, and we're going to set the ball speed, if you like, to the existing speed. Alright, so we're gonna, I'm going to do it that way first. Alright, so speed x. And you might think this is back to front, but you'll see why we're doing this in a second. Right, so if I left that line the way it is, ball set speed, ball speed x, ball speed y, all I'm doing actually there is setting the speed to the speed. I'm setting the x, uh, the speed x to speed x and speed y to speed y. But what we're going to do is we're going to add on to this the tilt x value and we're going to add on to the y speed the tilt y value. The reason we're doing it that way is because if you just set the speed based on the tilt, it's going to move instantly. The ball's going to move instantly in the direction you tilt. Whereas if you want to give the impression of a ball moving gradually turning to the left, ta gradually turning up or down depending on the way you tilt, that will do that. As it m and you'll actually get the you'll also have the acceleration as you tilt it and keep it tilting one way, it'll get faster and faster. The friction that we've set on the board will stop it getting too fast though. And that, I'm going to run that and see what happens. Now you can simulate tilting on a web browser just by moving the mouse, right? So by, you see, so this is as if I was tilting it, right? Now the only thing about that ball is it's a bit big. Um, so yeah, let's make that a bit smaller. And in fact, I missed that bit out in the code. So if we go back to the main, I missed a line out, which was ball set height or set width. When you're resizing a sprite, it doesn't really matter if you set the height or width because resizing one resizes the other because it keeps it proportionate. So I'm going to set the height to 30. Try again. Okay, so you see if I tilt left, it goes left. If I tilt right, it goes right. If I tilt it down, Okay, what I'm going to do to just make the simulation a bit better is we're going to set the angular speed of the ball basically to make it spin. Um, so let's see, and this isn't a perfect simulation, I'm doing this. Uh, where is it? Angular speed. I missed it, didn't I? Remember you can just type it, you can't find what you're looking for. I'm sure it's there. Just, oh, there it is there, actually. But I'm going to do it up here. So set angular speed. And I'm going to do a bit of a complex thing here. I'm going to say math absolute. And I'm going to take the absolute value, which is the positive value, basically, of ball speed y. Speed x, sorry. Plus, I'm going to ma absolute the value of the y as well, of ball speed y. Which basically means I'm adding the x and the y together, but I'm making them positive before I do that. So if it's moving, say, 10 up and negative 10 on the other axis, it'll st it'll, by making them positive, we're going to get 20 out. So the faster it's moving, basically, the faster the ball spin. That's not a perfect simulation of how the ball should spin but it will give a kind of impression of it. Okay, you see now as we do it, it's not perfect that by any means, but it will give an impression of the ball turning. Okay. And you really should try this out on a tablet or a phone so you can see how it works with by tilting your phone. Um, one other wee thing you can do is in the main we can add in some obstacles so you can say board create obstacle and for instance we'll make one at 300 by 200 which is the starting position of the obstacle 
and we're going to make it 200 in the y which means it's a straight line up and down and the last value there is the amount of bounce so we're going to give it the full bounce if you only want it to bounce back half of the speed that it hits it at you would put it to 0.5 right. so now we've got an obstacle so w one of the challenges here is to make more obstacles and make a maze so you could copy that line you could paste that line you could change the positions and add more and more obstacles you see and you could even make a maze that they have to try and navigate through um, and that's the end of activity 4a